a, a Rust file into an object and then link it into Unicraft. Uh, that was not enough in the sense that you could not uh, use uh, basic uh, features. For example, let's say that you would have like wanted to make a new vector, for example, and pushing it, uh, or or even uh, uh, use variables or uh, the API exposed by Unicraft. So this uh, uh, pull request that we just finished basically adds a new uh, internal library for Unicraft, which has. Uh, uh, these two, two main things. So the first main thing is that uh, it has uh, a, a new, it has the kernel crate, which simply generates the bindings. So in this case, uh, it generates the bindings for. Uh, let me no, not not this one. Uh, in bindings help. Bindings help. Yeah. So this file simply generates the bindings for this. Uh, Header files. If you need one that's missing from here, you add it here, and that's it. You will have uh, Rust bindings for it. And the other thing is that this uh, crate links the core crate and the allocator crate. So the core crate uh, has basic Rust functionalities, and uh, the allocator uh, uh, adds extra functionalities that uses the heap. Okay. So in this case, uh, we can now. Uh, Allocate a new vector and then push some value in it. So we have all these functionalities. Uh, I guess uh, now we are on par with what they did for the Linux uh, uh, Rust integration. Uh, and as a future work, uh, we have we are now uh, basically working on uh, on the short term on ARM integration uh, as well as uh, on uh, uh, Cargo. What, what uh, is the difference between? I mean. Uh, shouldn't this be portable? Is there anything XTC specific? Uh, n n there, there are a couple things like the, the compiler flag. So right uh, now we uh, use okay, yeah, we yeah, have yeah, a specific yeah, target. Yeah. Is this one? Mm. It's x86. But uh, uh, it it should be pretty doable in a couple like uh, in a couple hours. We should be able to also add the uh, ARM support and. So did this target yeah. JSON is part of the uh, Rust's build system? Uh, yes, this is what uh, basically how it compiles. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it these are the flags and everything that Rust uses to compile the uh, uh, let's say the Rust uh, files. Okay, uh, I, I yeah. recall there were uh, some at some point maybe Cyril knows some issues with full relocation. So I see this is all enabled. It's uh, does this work? Uh, because I, I I know that at some point we yeah. tried to make it pi uh, the entire executable and it, there were some issues with the build system. Uh, Cyril, if you have any input on this, yeah. So as far as we have tested it, uh, we haven't okay. noticed any issue with with that version. So okay, awesome. Yeah, uh, but me... some of those relocation issues they were so some things have been fixed in the linking script mm -hmm. and in the TLS uh, alignment uh, uh, which was also a related issue so uh, maybe we so I hope we have fixed those issues uh, so that's yeah, why yeah. we don't see them okay so basically this it's you're going to generate these bindings and then yeah so the bindings are generated using the uh, Rust mm -hmm. binding mm -hmm. tools so you're, it's, going to, uh, you're going to build the core part. Then yes. The, the, yes. This is going no. to be built uh, no matter what you implement in Rust, right? So this is always going to be compiled. Yes. Yes, that's true. Okay. Uh, uh, an interesting thing to say is that the, the core uh, crate. Uh, so this core is built from uh, the Rust uh, environment. So when you install Rust, the Rust compiler on your side, you'll have this Rust environment which has. The Rust core, the alloc core, crate, and everything related to it. How, how large so, is that? What is the memory footprint by, that's added by this kind of irreplaceable core components of Rust? Uh, they're not irreplaceable in the sense that okay. they, they are here only if you're using this uh, Rust crate. So if you want to have some very, very, very bare where you can only add numbers and basically that's it, it. version of Rust, then you can do that as well. Yeah, but I'm not sure how much sense that the, that makes. Okay. Uh, it, 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 yeah, I'm. That's. I'm not sure how useful is that. 
So yeah, they are pretty like, let's see, for example, the core that uh, oh, uh, has 1.1 megabytes, but since uh, we're, we're dropping on use functions, the final binary should be uh, hello world. KVM something oh. minus or underscore. Oh, oh yeah. Let, no, it's, let's a, take it's the app, app. It's app minus hello world. It's that is app minus hello world. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So it has eighty hundred kilobytes. So it's dropping on your screen. Uh, one question here. So uh, the the current I didn't uh, look at the at the PR. So libuk Rust is uh, an external library at this point, or it's going it's going to be part of the unit Rust core repo. So 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 it's it's going it's uh, an internal library. This is, this is uh, things that you might use to rewrite any internal Unicraft library in Rust. That, that I get, that I get, uh, but it, it's, so it's going to be part of the repo, right? I mean, internal libraries, yeah. as we call them, may also reside outside, outside the main Unicraft tree. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this one is internal. So it's in, inside the Unicraft, Unicraft, Unicraft tree, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, this is regarding kind of being able to have parts of Unicraft run, uh, uh, well implemented in uh, yes. Rust. Uh, what yeah, about quick, the... quick. yeah, please. So, for example, here's a very small example where we are uh, rewriting the UK arc parse library. Mm -hmm. In this case, and uh, it it also takes a lot slower to write in Rust, and the code uh, is memory safe in this case. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the um, the uh, the current status of running Rust applications on top of Unicraft? Uh, Cyril knows more about it on this. Okay, so I... Cyril? Yeah, so uh, so it's a thing which is a bit different because for typical uh, Rust applications, you'll want to use Cargo, which is their yeah, package yeah. manager. So it, it, and build it, tool. is this reliant on muscle support? Um, this one yeah, has, no. no 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 the, the, this the, the, one the, the application no the application the rust application port yeah 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 so we had the discussion this week uh but basically we need to to reevaluate our options because the rust code base uh and the compiler so now there is support to build uh, the standard library uh, outside of the uh, let's say mozilla build infrastructure so mm -hmm. uh we should be able to build it for Unicraft using whatever libc uh, is selected, uh, but we still need to test that. So for now, the approach is still uh, to reuse the muscle target, and so in that case, we would need to also enable muscle. Uh, but then we have a few conflicts at the moment uh, between uh, because of redefinitions. Uh, in the new Rust support and uh, compilers RT, which is a dependency uh, uh, when you want to use uh, cargo and muscle. So for now, we cannot use both at the same time, but we discussed some possible changes and we'll uh, try to test them uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so uh, the main problem is, uh, let, let me show you real quickly. So the, the main, the problem that Cyril was uh, saying was that uh, you, we have these compiler built-ins. In this case, they, they simply, we have defined panicking. So if you get this function, which normally shouldn't be run in the kernel, uh, you you get a panic. So uh, th this crate, so this this uh, file is also provided by uh, the, the Rust, by Rust, uh, but it has a dependency on the, the unwinder and everything. So uh, when you use the whole Rust with car Cargo, you'd have that file that has everything. And when you use uh, when you write internal libraries, you don't need that. And in this case, you use this uh, file which simply defines them, and but they're never used. Okay. Uh, yeah. And now for some examples. So here, so I've just shown you. So this is the uh, UK R parse library, which is also well, it looks a bit complicated. In this case, so this is the version in Rust. It's uh, it uses uh, uh, it it has been written by Dennis uh, during his uh, uh, summer of code uh, uh, hackathon, I guess. And uh, it 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 is the same, but it's uh, also safer. And uh, 
Well, from a performance point of view, it shouldn't have been any differences. Did you make any, any uh, sort of measurements? Did you do a performance test, uh, tracing, or anything? So, yeah, I, I did a simple, I measured the uh, total r runtime and there was no difference. So okay. I, I ran it, to, I, uh, I used it to like, uh, I called it a, a hundred times. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And another example here is uh, when we are using, for example, some bindings, in this case, uh, you simply have to include the uh, use the UK RAS Cisco it, and then you have access to bindings. And if you do something like bindings, uh, double dots, double dots, and then you have the symbol from Unicraft. So this can be anything, it can be any symbol exported by Unicraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a very simple example where you have uh, a simple function which calls another fun We have a main function which calls the foo from uh, Rust, and in this case, uh, the Rust function foo uh, calls boo, and the uh, boo uses a vector, allocates, uh, pushes the value 31, and then returns this value plus the value of uh, config uh, KVM PCI, which is 1, and uh, if we run it, uh, it's uh, alright. It's thirty-two. And uh, uh, yeah. how 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 does how does the make file look like? Uh, so the make files, uh, the, there are no differences. So this is the make file. Ah. You you simply add your Rust file, and that's it. Uh, so it it infers from the uh, from the dot rs what uh, what should it use? Compile Rust or compile? Yes, 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 yes. Right now. The, that's the case. You can also, for example, add uh, special headers for this in case you're exporting anything from Rust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. And uh, yeah. oh, are there any sort of Rust compiling uh, options specific that can be added to the build system? Uh, so or, or there, right now there, there aren't any Rust is usually kind of using some sort of defaults and uh, it's not usually the case. Yeah, that you provide yeah. them. So. We are using the defaults, and uh, then so these are the def defaults for compiling the O object, and then uses the Unicraft, uh, for example, configuration from Unicraft. You have the same ones, uh, performance, speed, uh, and size, I guess. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. performance, size, and none. Uh, you basically you have a default set for Rust, and over them you have the uh, specific uh, Unicraft uh, config options. So mm -hmm. if you change it, for example, in this case, if you go to any config and uh, go here and change uh, this one for uh, size, it will also apply to Rust. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So it's fully integrated in a sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, it. Thanks. O -o awesome work, Vlad. Uh, yeah, it's it the teamwork. So with Dennis and Cyril, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we managed to... Awesome work, Vlad, Cyril, and Dennis. Great job. Um, any other question, updates from anyone?